adjust your set. The Channel Chasers podcast has gone into the realm of 2D. Uh, we've decided to switch things up in terms of like aesthetic just to make it easier on uh, editing and whatnot. And also, I just I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I really just don't feel like getting camera ready anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just mad lazy. Uh, and again, th this eases up things for the entire team in terms of like putting the episodes together because one of our biggest issues with last season was the fact that like, you know, we ended up building up a backlog and like y'all missed out on a good mm -hmm. chunk of great episodes and we don't want that to happen to you again. Uh, but with no, that bit of house, uh -huh. but with that bit of housekeeping out of the way, welcome to the Channel Chasers podcast. I am, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me as always are my boys, Brian and Tony. You know, I was going to wear pink today, but then I realized two things. One. Uh, we're going completely audio now, so it's kind of pointless for me to, like, do a visual thing now. And also, we record this on, two on uh, you know, Tuesday nights, not Wednesdays. So wearing pink would not be appropriate because it's not a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. And if you don't understand that quote, also, then uh, something's wrong with you. And this is not the episode for you because we are talking nope. about Mean Girls, the musical. Yeah, and uh, just for the record, audio people... Nothing will change. Yep. Nah, y'all are getting the exact same experience. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we will be talking about the recent Mean Girls 2023, or ah, 2023 was last year, damn it. 2024 uh, musical, ad uh, musical adaptation of the beloved teen comedy classic. Uh, technically, it's an adaptation of an adaptation mm. because uh, first the musical obviously went to Broadway, was pretty successful on Broadway, and then got turned into a movie. Uh, the, the, the Broadway yeah. musical was turned into a movie. But uh, first, first though, some people forget it was a book. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I always forget that part. It was a book, then it was a 2006 movie. Yeah, two, uh, yeah, 2006 then, seems right. Then it was a Broadway musical, and now it's a musical movie. Yep, complete evolution. Uh, but before we get into talking about all things Mean Girls, of course, we're going to kick our episode off by jumping right into the news with Brian. All right, people. Now, this is going to seem kind of counter to um, our main topic, but I'm really excited about this, so I wanted to include this for our news. It's something quick, but really cool and exciting, and get spotlight to an actor who's been kind of a little bit uh getting the short end of the stick in Hollywood lately and uh that is uh do y'all remember the Denzel Washington Mila Kunis movie The Book of Eli? Yeah. Yes. I loved I The Book of Eli. It was cool. It, it is getting a prequel TV series. I always oh. thought it would be a better TV show. Starring John David Washington. John Boyega. Oh, I thought it was going to be John, John David Washington. John Boyega. Cool. John Still, John Boyega is dope. As a young Eli. I like it. I'm down. Where's this going to be? Yep. It's, uh, the original team is, that did the movie is involved, but the home is, uh, currently undecided. Okay. So they're shopping around. Yeah, but I'm excited for this. I love the movie. I honestly think that Mila could have done more action. I think she would have been cool. Honestly, like, she's a very underrated actress. Like, mm -hmm. she's got a lot of talent. Like, all you gotta do is look to Black Swan, man. Like, mm -hmm. her acting mm -hmm. against Ma Natalie Portman, which Natalie Portman was, like, insane in that movie. Like, literally insane. That all, that that nail that she did? Mm. But, but, yeah, I'm glad to see also John Boyega getting some stuff, because it seems like every time he's done an action role, it's not done well. Oh, that's not uh, true. Minus they clone, Attack they, the Block. I was supposed to say, they clone Tyrone alone was kind of action-y, especially towards the end, and right. that, that was pretty well received. Right. But uh, the Pacific Rim Uprising, the uh, Star Wars sequel... That, that was not his fault. None of it was his fault. He's a great actor. Oh, yeah. And I've loved him ever since, ever since Attack the Block. I would say I've loved him ever since Attack the Block. Attack the Block was what made me excited for Jodie Whittaker to become the doc. Yep, yep. Which had its ups and downs, but none of it was her fault. Yep. Uh, but yeah, no, that's cool. I'm down. I'm I'm totally down to watch a Book of Eli prequel show. Same. So that's why I included it. Also, so we aren't going on and on like we were with the, the Emmys and all that shit. But that's 
it for the news. All right. So with the news out of the way, we are going to jump into our next segment. It is that time once again is screen time. Screen time, for those of you at home, is the segment of the podcast where uh, the boys and I all discuss the different pieces of media we've consumed in between podcast episodes that could range from books, movies, TV shows that we uh, weren't able to cover on the podcast or stuff that we're watching weekly, um, YouTube series, different things like that, um, music as well. So uh, I'll start us off because mine's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. I've been absorbed into Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is this uh, like turn-based uh, card RPG uh, done by 2K Games uh, based off of the um, Marvel team, the Midnight Suns, and, you know, set in the Marvel Universe. Uh, I'd like to say that it's like a parallel timeline to the Insomniac Universe because Yuri Lowenthal also voices Pete here, um, <laughs> and it's at a earlier point in time. Uh, but essentially, it's uh, a bunch of the Marvel Mystic characters, some of my personal favorites, mixed with your favorite fan favorite Avengers all working together to take down Lilith and Kathan. It's really fun. Uh, the car, the, uh, you know, I'm always into turn-based RPGs and I like card combat based RPGs as well. The animations are pretty cool, but the thing that really sold me on this are the little like downtime moments and just the little bits of lore that we get to see of like the heroes hanging out together and just doing dumb things. And nice. just, like it, the game has a lot of personality and it's what really kind of sells me on it. Like, you know, while I have fun, like, customizing attacks and, you know, making my heroes super powerful and whatnot, uh, you, you can ask Tony. T Tony sat, Tony, both Tony and Brian sat there with me. The thing I have the most fun with, and Tony can attest to this, is, like, unlocking casual outfits for everybody oh, to yeah. just wear around the house. It is, is delightful. Like, it's great. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you are, like, a lore nerd for, like, Marvel comic stuff, and you, in particular, like, the mystical side of Marvel, Midnight Suns is totally a slept on fucking gem i enjoy it a lot i had a, i had a blast i'm gonna continue to play it. uh the other bit of uh media that i've consumed in between podcast episodes actually ties back to uh last week's episode a little bit because i finally got to check out the first couple issues of justice league versus well i'm just gonna call it justice league versus the legendary verse because it's essentially what it is um uh, it's fun it's it's really it's really campy and goofy, but it's it's what I expected. There are a lot of, there are a lot of cool moments in it. Uh, in ter uh, like uh, in terms of like just the Justice League fighting kaiju and mutos and different things like that. Uh, one of my favorite things is that like uh they're trying to like lure Kong out and they use Kara as bait because you oh. know Kong has a soft spot for blondes. <laughs> and then when 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 Kong tries to do his thing and like capture uh Kara, Kara just uppercuts him. Nice yeah it's, it's it's a bunch it's a bunch of just fun just cool things that i want to see happen i don't take the story super ah i don't take the story super seriously but like it's just fun you, you just get you just get to see your favorite heroes team up with the big g have your classic misunderstanding superman like quote unquote dies because he took some atomic breath to the face but we all know he's not dead no, um, but no. yeah it's really cool i like it uh that's pretty much it for me so uh brian what pieces of media have you consumed in between podcast episodes well um for one I didn't watch much, but I did watch uh, the latest episode of uh, Dirty Laundry, which uh, this one was a uh, Dungeons and Daddies special. Oh, I've heard of that podcast. Uh, if you, you have? Yeah. You know who's in it, right? Aren't I? Uh, uh, you, huh? YouTube uh, legend uh, Freddie Wong. Oh, yeah. He's in it with some of his friends, and it's a pretty cool twist on a DD and d podcast because all of them, it's like an isekai. They do it kind of like an isekai, but they're all dads who got isekai with their young kids. Mm -hmm. And so the, the crux of their adventure is trying to find all of their kids. Yep. It, it, but uh, they're fun people. Three out of the four were part of the podcast, and one was just a friend of theirs. And they did some of the more tamer stuff, but there were some interesting ones, like uh, who was featured in a tabloid magazine. Who didn't find out that internet porn was a thing until they were 22? What? <laughs> How do you spend any time on the internet and not discover porn? And then also, who fell asleep on a wet bed and got a cold? Oh, that's rough. Yeah, jeez. Yep. And I will just tease, a story does not go where you think it. Oh, okay. Oh. 
Okay. And then also, I watched the first uh, uh, one episode of a new show that's also on the Dropout app called Very Important People, where, you know, the crux of uh, Dropout is that they have a lot of uh, improv. Yeah. So the host is uh, Vic Michaels, and what she does is invites on one of these improvers, and then their behind-the-scenes makeup team will put on, like, prosthetics and, like, make a full character for this person without them knowing. And then when it's all revealed, they have to open their eyes and have a very quick amount of time to uh, come up with a character for them, and then Vic interviews the character. Okay, interesting. I saw one episode of it. Uh, the character ended up being... Uh, Vic's ex step grandmother. All right, and it was just it was just funny the way that they did it. But also, um, just a shout out to uh, I watched the last episode. I didn't know this was coming, but the very last uh, eat it or ye it, which for those that don't know, that was a series on the uh, Smosh Pit channel. Which was, like, what the people who aren't, like, Ian and Anthony that are, like, the Smosh actors, that's, like, where they got to shine. And uh, this one was, they brought in a chef, producer, Garrett, and he creates these things for them. And they can either be secretly disgusting or actually good. Yeah, and you've mentioned it before. This was the, the very last episode. They did a, like, 50-minute Last Supper special to celebrate it. It's gone on for four years, but this was the end, and I thought I'd just give it a shot shout out uh lastly just in the off time just here and there especially because i've not been feeling great between that and duck in editing pit needed something to cheer me up i actually started checking out something that uh jay put me on to that uh i think he may have forgot to mention in his screen time oh young sheldon oh right oh i i yeah i, I didn't really i didn't really talk about it i i had mentioned this to you off camera but i yeah i hadn't really like yeah that's right i did start i did start checking out young sheldon uh on netflix recently mm -hmm. it's really good i like it i like it a lot yeah yeah um it really didn't start popping off until uh any pots joined mm-hmm as a Mima. Yep. Which, uh, for those that don't know, Annie Potts is like an 80s legend. Her biggest thing that she's known for is uh, Janine in uh, Ghostbusters. Oh. That's Mima. Nice. Which, uh... I didn't know she was Janine. Also, yep. Also, fun fact about the casting of, uh, young Sheldon. Mm. Uh, if you go and you watch Big Bang, the woman that plays his mom, mm -hmm. her IRL daughter plays the young mom on young Sheldon. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, it was pretty good. Just... It's like turn your brain off type stuff. It's a lot deeper than I was expecting, like at least because like I didn't really know much about it going in. So like, yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the subject matter caught me off guard, especially like uh, Sheldon's relationship, personal relationship with religion because mm -hmm. of, because of how much it, you know, it's tied to his family and uh, in particular his mom. Yep, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Also, I could watch a show just about his high school teachers. Oh, yeah. They're all funny. So are his siblings, but it was pretty good. I'm continuing to watch it, but I'm only a few episodes in. Uh, but that was basically it for me this week. All right, Tony, uh, mm. what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, other than shows that I've been up to date with, mostly anime I've been up to date with, mm -hmm. uh, I actually checked out a new anime that I just decided to watch out of pure boredom and curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to give you the basic premise of this show. And it's about a boy in a magical world. He cannot use magic at all. Okay. But he says, okay. wait lips. Just oh, exercise. you're talking about, you're talking about Mashal. Yes, I am. I was like, as soon as you started. Yeah, Mashal. Uh, I love Mashal. I heard this I've heard good things this shit is hilarious mashal's me yeah mashal's really funny um it's essentially it's, uh... To, to, to give you guys a quick elevator pitch because because Tony, Tony doesn't know how to elevate a pitch essentially think about think Harry Potter but like Harry doesn't know magic and uh basically he solves all his problems by punching things or just lifting and getting super super jacked it's mm -hmm. like black clover but played more comedically he's also obsessed with cream puffs that he is is actually quite quite funny yeah I think that came out like what two seasons ago yeah yeah uh, yeah I, there's I, actually a, a second season out right now oh the second season drop i didn't know that yeah yeah oh shit uh yeah i've i've been reading uh yeah i i, re I, I read mashal and jump i'm behind but i i, I do read mashal uh i just think it's just comedy gold oh it's hilarious yeah 
Oh, that's a good one. Anything else? Especially, like, so far, that's the only thing. One thing I love about Mashal, though, is, like, this cop thinking he's hot shit because, oh, I can do this shit. It's, uh, his shit rocked by a teenager. Oh, what's the, like, uh, what's the dub for Mashal? I haven't checked out the dub. Actually, pretty damn good. I, I like, I always make it a thing to try and check out dubs for comedies because, like, I, I, I like to see how, like, comedy transfers over. Uh. I'm only like three episodes in because I got past, you know, your typical Harry yeah. Potter ad introduction. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's like that whole exam art, that whole exam thing where he's just like, oh, I'm just going to walk through the fucking maze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally walk through the goddamn maze. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I know. Oh, man. I yeah. was just thinking for the audience. Master, yeah. Master, Master's, Master's really fun. Uh, it has sort of the same kind of like dry referential humor that like a one punch man has for like superhero stuff oh yeah that is it felt very one punch man to me so like if you're in if you're into like harry potter or you know different fantasy uh stuff like harry potter uh i and uh you, you know you want you want something a little silly mashal is definitely something i i would also recommend checking out for sure nice i've heard good things nice oh and yeah. uh speaking of anime uh we could talk about this because this is a, a shared one we find we got tony to watch delicious in dungeon so tony you can finally give your thoughts to the people <laughs> the gentlemen were right about the store then she is basically me a hyper fixated cook of a man that all he wants to do is eat monsters and make sure they taste fucking delicious yep marcel like, and I her mean, antics are also hilarious that poor girl man she she does not know poor thing yep but yeah it's a really it's a really fun anime i mean we talked about it last week so i'm not really gonna go too deep back into it but like this this show is so much fun oh and i would like to make a correction on uh, last week's uh screen time mm. or uh, the alexander webb uh short or messed up things in comics the man go what the fuck mm -hmm. it was actually 101 not 102 okay good to know for the uh for the tim drake what the fuck <laughs> yep yeah all right so that's it for screen time so now we're gonna move on to trailer talk trailer talk at the segment of the podcast where our boy brian here has curated a playlist of six count them six trailers for us to react to and through the magic of editing we will come back to you shortly with our rapid fire thoughts on these trailers and like i said youtube people you can find this playlist of trailers linked down below in the description so brian tell the folks at home what we will be reacting to tonight all right so we got an interesting collection two movies for tv show the first movie is called upgraded it is a rom-com on a prime it kind of has a generic plot uh for these type of things it follows anna an aspiring art intern who is on a last minute work trip to london by her super boss meeting the handsome and wealthy william on the plane ah uh, that's one but, of those but the reason why i included it is because it has kind of an interesting cast. Okay. The William is actually from uh, Shadow and Bone. Oh? Uh, I might get this name wrong, but uh, Mal Yin. Oh! Oh, wait. Matt, yeah. He's, he, he's, you're, you're, ta you're talking, you're talking about the, uh, the male lead, right? Or are you talking about the bad guy? I, don't, I, I think male lead. Okay. Because it's I, not I... Ben Barnes. Okay. But yeah, him, the main character is uh, Camilla Mendes. Really? Mm-hmm. Veronica, nice! And, uh, other people in it are, uh, Marissa Tomei. Yay! Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Anthony Head. Huh, wasn't Ooh. expecting that. And then, uh, stand-up comedians Andrew Schultz and Matteo Lang. Andrew Schultz is hilarious. I, li I listen to the, Brill uh, the Brilliant Idiots podcast with him and Charlemagne all the time. Nice. And, uh, Matteo Lane is funny. I follow him on TikTok. Nice. But, uh... That's the first one. Second movie is called uh, Problemista. Okay. It is a new one from uh, A24, one that they picked up on a uh, film festival. It stars, uh, it's written, directed, and starring uh, Julio Torres, who uh, was an SNL writer. Okay. And also a uh, co-creator of the HBO series uh, Los Espookies. Oh, I like that show. He uh, created, he created that, well, co-created that, and... And uh, this one is interesting because he stars as a uh, as a dude who's a wannabe toy maker, but his visa is running up. So his green card is running up. Sorry. 
Uh, but so he gets a job offer from an eccentric artist who actually may help him with both of those. And uh, the eccentric artist is Tilda Swinton. Huh. Mm. And also in the cast is uh, the uh, the Academy uh, Award nominee, Greta Lee, from the uh, Indie Darling Past Lives. And also RZA. Like the RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan? Yep. The Ro- fuck? Robert Fitzpatrick Diggs. The fuck? Why is Rissa in this movie? I don't know. But anyway, moving on to TV, uh, something that's also artsy. It's called uh, Ripley. It's based upon the uh, the famous grifter. It's a black and white miniseries that's coming to Netflix. It's a, a psychological thriller, apparently, about a grifter named Ripley living in New York during the 60s. Is hired by a wealthy man to begin a complex life of deceit, fraud, and murder. Okay, intriguing. It stars Andrew Scott. Also, Academy Award nominee recently. That's a uh, dude from Fleabag? Yep, Fleabag and uh, Sherlock. Yep, yep. But was... also in the show is uh, Dakota Fanning. Oh, cool. And then next show is called... I don't uh... know why when you said Dakota Fanning, I pictured in my head Dakota Johnson. Uh, uh, happened. She's talked about a lot right now because Madam Webb. Yeah. But, uh, the next show is... Uh, we're going to Apple TV. Constellation. It stars... Uh, probably going to get this name wrong. Rumi LaPaz. Uh, she was the original girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, from the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not, not the, the original version, not the, the, not, obviously the, uh, the American one was Rooney Mara, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the original. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, it stars her as a, uh, astronaut who returns to Earth after a disaster in space, only to discover that key pieces of her life seem to be missing. Brian, I swear to God, if this is another space thing with a giant spider, I'm gonna punch you in the face no it doesn't seem like that okay this one is actually a tv show um and i will say that uh a surprise in this one is also uh jonathan banks name sounds familiar uh, but not ringing any bells um breaking bad better call saul oh uh he was uh he was mike yeah mike arm trial yeah and then another interesting one uh miniseries for uh, apple a new look it is a uh, fashion designer it's about fashion designers Christian Dior, Coco Chanel, and their contemporaries navigate the horrors of World War II while launching modern fashion. That sounds fascinating. Um, Especially because you got stuff like Hugo Boss also. I wonder if that's going to, you know. Well, I do know that uh, that uh, Ben Mickelson is, is Christian Dior. Dior? Dior. Christian Dior. Oh. And uh, Maisie Williams is playing, I believe, his daughter. Oh, cool. And uh, John Malkovich is also in it as Lucien Lelong. I think it's a fashion person i don't know my bad i'm um, getting that wrong and then the last one is a last minute edition called a shogun don't know if you guys have heard about this one nope it is an upcoming fx show that will be on hulu oh it is yeah oh Going back to you uh-huh uh, when a mysterious european ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village lord yoshi torin naga discovers secrets that could tip the scales of power and devastate his enemies it's a like japanese period piece looks like it could be uh like twisting the whole white savior trope because there is a there is a white guy in here but the shogun might be manipulating him to uh his uh so what his, uh, so what the, so what time period are we talking are we talking about the uh, sengoku jedi are we talking the tokugawa shogunate what, what's, what's up do we know uh un momento, por favor. uh it's a uh fictionalized version of real life events and story uh based upon the, the story of william adams oh yep he, he was he was one of the he was one of the arms dealers that were, uh, went along with good old commodore perry yep so it's about that time if you uh for those of you guys who don't know uh anything about uh you know japanese japanese history commodore perry is the dude responsible for uh introducing guns to japan but n- not Ooh. not in the not like not in the same way because technically the portuguese and the dutch introduced uh yeah guns to japan but commodore perry showed up with the black ships and they were essentially like hey japan open up we're gonna blow you the fuck up and uh Damn. the rest is history and that's how nobunaga yeah. ga- gained his massive boner for guns and uh just the last thing is uh notable cast members for that show include uh both scorpion and raiden from the latest mortal Kombat movie cool. and uh tony's favorite character on monarch okay yeah 
nice. The actress was wonderful. It was just the kid. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, he gave Kate That's so it. much shit. I hope you guys saw that episode. It was a great episode. Go watch it if you hadn't. Or listen to it. I guess there isn't really a watch anymore. Uh, but anyways. Right. With technology wants to just go poo-poo on everybody's fun. Uh, but yeah. So we will be back shortly after we've seen all these trailers. But until then, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. All right. Well, honestly, there isn't much to say about this batch of trailers, but there are some good ones in here. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, the, the main ones I want to focus on are uh, Constellation, the new look, and Shogun. So we'll start off with the new look. That looks fascinating. Uh, I, we talked about it off camera, but like, so you're only going to get this if you've been following the podcast for a while because we did an Oscars special a couple years back and me and yep. Ryan roasted the fuck out of this movie. So, um, well, originally, originally you didn't see it. Right, right. Just, right. I, yeah. I had just saw yeah. it. Yeah. You were, yeah, you were the one who had seen it. I didn't get, yeah, because we, we were both in, we were both in a race at the time that year to watch all the Oscar movies before the Oscars. And I had gotten through most of them. The only one I had missed was Phantom Thread. So I volunteered to watch it and nearly fall to, fell asleep like two, three times watching it. Yeah, so uh, off camera, me and Brian like described it. I was like, this is exactly what I thought the fan, the, what I, this is exactly what I thought Phantom Thread was going to be. From how they describe mm -hmm. Phantom Threat. Uh, but I like it. It has this kind of like World War II almost espionage kind of vibe. I'm like, okay, this is, this is interesting. Uh, like I said, uh, like fashion does play a pretty big role in uh, culture in Europe during uh, the uh, post war era and, you know, in the middle of the war. And I'm actually very interested to see uh, like kind of how, like, how companies that were associated with, uh, you know, not so, uh, not so likable characters shake out you know like i said like hugo boss who of course designed the uniforms for you know the national socialist party yeah, yeah. the uh mm. the cutthroat world of fashion it's a uh, tale as old as time it's always been interesting and you know look me, yeah. and, me and tony always always make it a habit anyway during shows to just pause and comment <sighs> on people's outfits oh yeah and also the way because there is a little bit of history between a lot of these famous individuals because of the nature of the business how cutthroat it is mm -hmm. and the cutthroat of them all is coco chanel oh yeah mm -hmm. she if you don't if coco. you don't if you don't know about coco chanel coco oh, chanel no. has done some done some shit yeah if if you thought that businesses today well they're still pretty cutthroat but they're not as devious not as methodical not as duplicitous mm -hmm. as coco oh my yeah god this no nah, she like mm. i'm very interested in her character because if done right especially with how it's framed she could be like uh she could be the next cersei lannister mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm very intrigued uh so on to constellation so this one oh this one's like a this one's a fucking head scratcher like uh like fucking 40 minutes uh 40 seconds into the trailer i already started thinking i'm like okay so i have a theory so uh my theory is that like i think what happened is that the home girl like went through some kind of wormhole event horizon type deal and she ended up in a parallel universe where uh in her home universe, she did not survive the explosion and she died. But here, she survived. Now, Tony added on something to it, which I think is very interesting. He combined another uh, idea that I have. So I'll go ahead and let Tony talk about it. Yes, with that, it is simple comic book logic that puts this framework together. She went to this parallel universe, but... She also brought something with her to expound on the problems of dimensional displacement. The only reason why I say that is because there's a precedent for it. Sci-fi stories have a lot of things to delve into in the vacuum of space and dimensional travel. And the perfect example of bringing things with you from a different dimension is, of course, Marvel's symbiote. Yep. Now, granted, yep. that's the most famous example, but another example that I pointed out when we were watching the trailer is how in the ultimate marvel universe ultimate reed richards discovered a world filled with zombies and that story later got its own mini series that being marvel zombies yep so you know th there is a lot of precedent so either way super intrigued uh we're gonna check it out yeah. i mean you know mm -hmm. uh you know we we trust our gut with monarch and monarch was fucking insane so yeah you know 
Yeah. Definitely Monarchy. also intrigued by this one for sure. I really like the idea of seeing more stuff of uh, of uh, things that aren't based on an existing IP. Oh yeah, Ori- I'm always here for more original concept stuff. Also, mm-hmm. uh, Numi Replace, or however you say her name, sorry. Yep. She's always good. Um, loved her in the highly underrated What Happened to Monday. Oh, What Happened to Monday was good, yeah. Where she played like seven different characters. What? That was a- full on Orphan Black. <laughs> Style. Didn't we? I feel like we did. We cover that. I think we talked about it. We didn't cover we it. Didn't. We definitely talked about it because I remember watching it with you, right? I remember watching it with you and talking about it. That was a yeah. It was a re- that was a really good movie. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, the Camila Mendez one. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, upgraded. Upgraded. It looks cute. Uh, not really much to it say. It, it has this like Devil Wears Prada type vibe. It's clearly one of those like Princess and the Popper, like you know. She starts she she starts a relationship on a lie. She has to maintain the lie. Um, mm. you know, definitely definitely uh looks like it'll be fun. Got Marissa Tomei in it, but so I'm here for it. It also plays it also I don't know how I feel about this, but it plays on that New York versus British thing. Yeah. Um, also, uh mm-hmm. we on top of that, we got two teasers, one good, one what the fuck. Yeah. Uh, the what the fuck one. People, I'm tired of your loose terminology of a teaser. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck because... that was, problem used to, I, what is your, like, Brian gave us a descriptor before we cut, but, like, if I hadn't gotten that descriptor, I would not have known, like, what the fuck that even had to do with anything. It, it didn't. It was just them being weird to promote to say that the movie the movie is coming to theaters because it it's already premiered in uh, it's already premiered in uh, Sundance festival period in plural and it's been getting rave reviews so I thought hey there's finally a trailer for it because I've been following this movie and so I thought I'd include it but no it wasn't a trailer. It wasn't a teaser. It wasn't a trailer. It was just a weird announcement. Announcement. Yeah, no, that, that and was... they were treating it like it was an established property that everybody was waiting for. Like when they did the the Oda thing for season two of yeah uh... One Piece. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the vibe I was getting with the whole yeah, like with, with that little thing with him and the Denden Mushi. That was the vibe I got as well. I was like, wait, is this supposed to be a thing? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, because this is not an established project but anyway uh you know uh, what, what, but uh, uh, but the but by far the standout is, of uh the batch shogun holy uh, shit I get into that, though, yeah i i wanted to actually just make this statement when for uh mm-hmm. whatever the fuck that uh so-called teaser was for for la vista i basically acted like a dog trying to like make sense of something head tilting everything oh same same yeah, um, but a teaser that I did enjoy, though, real quick, is uh, Ripley. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. don't really have much no, to say no. about it, but it has this ominous vibe to it, and I'm intrigued. Um, apparently, it's, uh, Ripley is an established character. Uh, they did another movie with him in, like, uh, I think 2002 called Ripley's Game, yeah. and that one starred, uh, John Malkovich, which was kind of funny, because John Malkovich is apparently in this, too, hmm. and, uh, well, there is a line in the teaser where he says i like that name <laughs> huh nice but anyway a a modern day black and white thriller is going to be interesting to see i i'm just well a, that does i'm just a sucker for black and white stuff um, yeah. but i trust andrew scott that man hadn't done wrong oh yeah uh but seriously though shogun holy shit yes it, like just production value alone it looks amazing um i i will say that i think um with these last three trailers which were which, like I said, were Constellation, um, the fact, a uh, new look, and Shogun. I think this is the most quiet that we've ever been while reacting. Yeah, Just because, we like, you so know, because, yeah, because you had, because, like, with those, we really had to kind of absorb it. There wasn't anything, like, funny to comment on. So it was just like, oh, cool, cool. Well, especially, uh, Especially with Shogun, because with a uh, with a uh, a new look, we were talking about the fashion stuff, and with Constellation, we did a little bit of theorizing. But with Shogun, we were just like dead silent. Yeah, because it was just like holy shit. You know what this? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a better version. And this is not a knock against this show, because I actually really did like this show. Uh, but it was a victim of being an early Netflix show. It reminds me of a better mm-hmm. version of Marco Polo. Oh. I really enjoyed Marco Polo uh, from Netflix, mind you. I never watched. I thought it was really good. Me and my dad liked it. Um, 
Also gave me kind of vibes of a more serious, less magic -y version of uh, the uh, 47 Ronin. Also, uh, it definitely doesn't feel like the, the white guy is the protagonist. Uh, no. no. So. I think it's more of an ensemble yeah. sort of deal. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like kinda, I said. Yeah. It, it, like, it feels like the type of show that I've always wanted. A fucking Sengoku period Game of Thrones. That's exactly what I want too, man. Yeah. Because... The Sengoku period in Japan's history was basically Game of Thrones. It was. Like. So me, me, yeah. and, me and Tony, me and Tony watched this whole like documentary series on Netflix about the unification of Japan. Really, it's really good. I think it's called The Age of the Samurai. Was it that what it was called, Tony? The Age of Samurai? leaf so something like that i don't know. very good but mm -hmm. with reenactments and uh these scholars interjecting oh my god it was intense and both uh jay and i learned new things about these historical figures oh, that yeah. we didn't even realize mm -hmm. oh nice but, uh what was one that we were both surprised by jay uh mm. it's been a while since it's been a while since we've watched it but uh, oh i think i remember because uh mm -hmm. hideyoshi was a rather loved alcohol a lot and and he was an insane person. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. He he was an alcoholic and and he ended like he like he died because he ended up like um going insane after contracting syphilis. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh. Yep, yep, yep. That's what happened. But but like I said in the uh, plot summary part, um it does look like they are like playing on the white savior thing. Like they're not doing it, but they're like subverting it. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I got I got Game of I definitely got Game of Thrones vibes because we got to see like different regions of Japan and mm -hmm. all the and like the di the different clans with the with the accurate with the period accurate fucking banners. Mm -hmm. You see the Oda, mm -hmm. you see the Tokugawa. Man, if we get to see like Date, if we get to see Masamune, we get to see that would be cool. If we get to see the one eyed demon Date Masamune, I mean, if we got to see at least the family Date, that would be sick. Like the yep. clan Date. Oh, the yeah. Dante clan oh, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. oh my god, one thing that I loved about that documentary series that Jay and I saw was how fascinating all the different battle plans and strategies. Because, mm -hmm. of course, it was more educational you, since it was a documentary. The, but, I want but, this yeah, yeah, but like with this dramatization, end. yeah, you can add a lot more sauce to it. And mm -hmm. I, I think something that's going to be also very interesting that the documentary touched on a lot is the, like uh the evolution of uh oda nobunaga as a person oh yeah going from like you know the disrespectful fool of awari to to this you know you know capable soldier to a proven general to the demon king of the sixth heaven like oh, yeah. if we get to see like the uh the burning of the temple of mount e on uh mount hie like yo it's gonna be some intense shit dude but i think because we also got to make sure that our timelines are correct because when uh, the Dutch would have been popping up here and there, I would yeah. wager. Because oh, and, and we saw and we saw in the thing that like Christianity has been introduced to Japan because we saw. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, here's an interesting fact about uh, another famous uh, person from Japan. Miyamoto Musashi actually took part in the conflict of the Shimabara Rebellion. Yep. Which I wonder, since, since we saw, since we got like fo a little bit of focus on like, uh, you know, uh, Japanese Christians, if we're going to see like maybe not the rebellion itself, but like have flashbacks to it kind of like a robert rebellion sort of thing to use the game of thrones comparison maybe well hey we don't know for sure what the yeah. entirety of the plot is like uh yeah we, yeah, 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 we, yeah we don't know the timeline we're just speculating but either way it looks really cool very excited oh, can't dude, wait to see it look sick as fuck i am excited i want to see this damn it oh yeah but yeah so that's it for trailer talk so now it is time for the discussion proper honestly uh it seems like this has been a trend for ep oh, like multiple episodes now uh i mean well, <laughs> mo well monarch monarch we actually had like a spoiler free and spoiler section but like with this one for real like it's mean girls right like yeah if mm -hmm. you haven't seen it what the fuck are you doing here go watch the original uh, indeed and uh oh. like it's a cult classic um certified hood classic if i do say so myself um mm -hmm. but yeah there isn't really anything to spoil uh how we're gonna structure it is we're gonna start off by talking about kind of like our like what we thought of the original 
like some of the stuff we love about it and uh you know kind of just looking at this clearly 2016 movie in 2024 eyes and then like talking about the musical itself how the musical has added things to it and whether we think those changes or uh additions were for the better or for worse so really no spoilers here we're just going to talk about mean girls overall uh so let's start off with uh our thoughts on the original i'll, I'll kick us off uh this is one of my favorite movies of all time it's one of my favorite movies of all time mm. i quote this movie to this day almost daily like yeah uh just the other day i think it was with you guys mm -hmm. but i actually said uh boo you whore i use that <laughs> I, that I use that one all, that's the one i use all the time that's like that's my that is my go-to who you whore uh, oh man. i love that one you go glenn coco iconic yeah fucking uh, she doesn't even go here so good so good so many quotes so many memes you know it you love it uh mm. so here but here's the thing right we gotta be honest with ourselves here mm -hmm. mean girls is a great movie it is however question, yeah however comma it is a product of its time <laughs> It, mm -hmm. it is it, it most certainly is and like that's not a bad thing right tropic thunder is a product of its time and tropic thunder would never ever get made today um but yeah. it's amazing uh mm -hmm. mean girls i still don't think would get made today um because of just how how do i describe it mean girls at the time was one of those comedies that actually said the quiet part out loud which is why i think it resonated with a lot of of uh teens and mm -hmm. kids growing up so this came out in 2006 so i was in middle school at the time and like middle school is like the foundation of like clicky behavior like that's when the shit starts right mm -hmm. you, that's when you start forming your clicks finding your people all that type of stuff and then that carries over into high school so i think that's why a lot of uh, a lot of people my age and of course you know uh old, uh, like older teens uh definitely resonated with mean girls Me. a lot uh Wait. and I, I don't know like some of it it holds up right i did watch i, I rewatched the i rewatched the original last week um j just because i i wanted I, I wanted a comparison it holds up it's still funny but like a lot of the characters are really kind of nothing characters when you really yeah. look at them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like aside from katie and regina right the others are kind of just there yeah sure yeah. they have personality but and quotes all they have in the quotes yeah but but like gretchen is that Karen is stupid. It's just like they're very also, one note. Gretchen has oh. Gre Gretchen has the Caesar rant, which got cut, which wasn't in this movie, but you know, still one of my favorite quotes. And also the whole thing with Karen just doing breast oh. weather reports. Oh yeah. Oh, that. Also, also like a joke that did not age well in the original. The fact that Karen was so dumb that she like like made out with her cousin on several occasions. God oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, You're I just, right. Yeah. Just, just not, 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 uh, not a good look. <laughs> not a good, not look. good look. Uh, but like, it's still funny. It, it holds up. Uh, you know, it, it has, you know, it has the, you know, the standard message of like just, you know, fuck conformity. You, you don't need to fit in. Just be you, right? Like, yep. it's a simple mm -hmm. message, but it's presented mm -hmm. in such a like say the quiet part out loud way that it sticks with people. Yeah. And I. I think the musical uh does that very well like it definitely preserves the message keeps that message intact um i will say and you know i'm not really gonna bounce between people on this one we're just gonna have kind of a panel discussion um i will say that like i think that the like the way that it, the way that it handles things uh actually is a little bit better paced uh yeah because in the original um they they still do the montage to to, to you know get through like the whole plan with the plastics but it kind of drags a little bit in like the interim, but like using the numbers to transition uh, within it, within the musical makes it a lot more snappy. Yeah. Um, I, I can agree with that. Um, Cause you said we're not, we're not uh, like doing individual stuff. So I will just say for me that uh, I had a little bit of a different experience with the original. Cause uh, for those that don't know, I'm actually a little bit older and this is where I uh, reveal the secret and all that. Um, Cause when this came out, I was, in my sophomore year of high school. So mm -hmm. I resonated with more of the high school part of the clickiness and all of that. Also, uh, kind of had a crush on Lindsay Lohan back in the day. Who didn't, Brian? Yeah, I was say she was cute. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the original. It's a good comfort movie for me. 
But looking at it from the lens of modern, I can see like some of the problematic stuff and also the uh, one note is sometimes they're one note characters. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm very glad that didn't get adapted from the original film for the musical, mm -hmm. the Coach Parr subplot. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. Glad, glad that, glad that just smooth cut out. Mm -hmm. Also, Tony brought up something to me when we were just talking individually about the movie that I just complete, like, it completely went over my head. I didn't even realize what a thing. I didn't even realize they never mentioned Katie's dad in the musical. Like, Katie's yeah. dad just doesn't exist. Yeah. 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 He was a, granted he was, wasn't was much of a character, but he existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, that was like, when I was watching the film, it's like, well, the musical was like, where the fuck is her dad? <laughs> now, I do, now, I do think this is, there's an interesting point to this, and this might just be me, me digging too deep when there's not really any depth there. But personally, right, I, I think it's an interesting choice to have her be in a uh, single parent house because, um, you know, uh, studies often show that uh, kids who grew up in single parent households m more often than not have uh, identity issues uh, going into uh, adolescence. And so Katie both being like, you know, spend most of her time in a, both in a different country and like in a single parent household and a homeschooled environment. It uh, kind of makes a lot more sense to why she would uh, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, go through the arc that she did. Yeah, yeah. it does that make sense. Also, from a uh, from a like just remake story standpoint, uh, behind the scenes thing, I can see them giving her one parent because uh, in the original, neither of her parents had that big of a role. So giving her only one parent gives both of those like story beats to one person to yeah. make a more fleshed out character. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that the mom was really that fleshed out anyway, but you know, but we will talk about yeah. a mom in a second. We will talk about a mom in a second. Yeah, uh, but I do want to say one one other problematic thing mm -hmm. that I re realized from the original is the whole Halloween thing. Oh yeah, is uh yeah in this in this one they're just provocative costumes. In the original, it was literally just blonder yeah yeah i went back and i watched mm -hmm. i'm like yo they're just in lingerie right now like whoa oh shit lingerie um, with animal ears and a tail yep yep yeah. see you wonder why our generation is there are so many of those in there mean girls added to that uh yep it acted faded a few of our neuro but uh but yeah so uh, let's talk about some of the changes now now that we've kind of discussed the original let's talk about some of the changes so uh we alluded to it before uh but one thing that i think the musical improves on from the original is that like the other plastics have mm -hmm. much more personality um oh, in yeah. particular i want to talk about my favorite plastic my girl Gretchen Wieners. I love Gretchen. Oh, yeah. I absolutely oh, love Gretchen. And Homegirl I, from uh, Love, Victor. Yep. I have to say this 100% about Miss Wieners. Girl, you, you've been emotionally abused by someone who calls themselves your best friend. Yeah. And I feel I, bad for you. And, you know, I... I started the I started the discussion talking about how Mean Girls did a lot of the say the plot part out loud, uh, you know, thing mm -hmm. with with how they displayed the message. The musical does this again, but they say the quiet part of Mean Girls out loud, right? Because a lot of the stuff with Gretchen is inferred, right? Uh, by like how the by how the character acts and stuff. But like in the musical, we actually get to see like a peek into Gretchen's head with that short little number, "What's wrong with me?" And oh my god, I loved it because it. It's, it's so sad mm -hmm. because like of how and it's also very realistic of like just kind of like somebody that you value like you know that whose opinion you value so much uh like and you kind of like not worship them but like they're so much of they have so much of an impact on your life that you're just like man i'm never gonna measure up to them like man my friend is so cool how am i gonna be as cool as my friend kind of thing like you know one of my best friends he's a fucking doctor right like you know a lot, a lot of a lot of that like you know insecurity and like not being able to measure up to your friends it's a it's a very realistic thing and oh yeah i love i love that they did that with gretchen again it's it's something small but these small little additions make such a big impact i think oh yeah and then also the small little extra cherry on top to that scene where what inspires it is that she sees the music box that she gave to Regina that she got from her Abuelita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Work. Oh man, that was sad. So sad. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, so the, the other, the other uh, plastic, uh, that 
uh, gets a little bit more personality is uh, Karen. So Karen Shetty yeah. in this version. Uh, I love this version of Karen more because like, yes. I, I like, the, the, I actually the, like this version of Karen much better than the original. Cause in the original, I, she was just kind of, she was just dumb bitch, right? Like it was just a one note joke. She was just super dumb. Yeah. A super dumb blonde. Yeah. That's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Super dumb blonde. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, with this, it wasn't just her being like the ditzy blonde. I mean, it helps that she was Indian, right? But like, she wasn't just the ditzy blonde. Like, her dumbness felt more innocent, mm -hmm. and it nice. also helped to make Regina seem like even more of a villain because, like, yeah. dude, this girl is so dumb. You could see how easily she could be manipulated. Like, and one of my one of my favorite parts with her, which is a small part, mm -hmm. where. She's not even on screen. Is uh, when oh, I think you're gonna talk about the part that I talked about. I, I talked about with Tony. Uh, so when the there. shit hits the fan. Yep, 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 yep. So, yeah, Katie's I, all I, on I, her I, own. I was just about to bring that up. Okay, so because I because I love this too. This is the part that really stuck in my head with Karen. Is that like um you know uh, what's my heart? Katie gets outed. I guess you would say and like kind of blamed for regina's tragedy yeah in the burn book and so and everybody she's become persona non grata at the school but and so she's at home at her suspension and then her mom comes up with her uh, gives her phone back and she goes oh yeah uh a girl named karen uh sent you a message saying don't worry it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that uh, everyone else at school hates you i'm still your friend and i'm like oh karen i'm yeah karen, karen, she's such a she's just such a genuine person and and I, and her number also helps to really like show that personality. I loved yeah. sexy. And I love how it starts. She's mm -hmm. like, oh, I should probably mention world peace first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Halloween was every day. Oh, wait. And world peace. Wait, I should say world peace first. I love that. Mm -hmm. and and then uh, the whole thing about cancer, where she's like, and sex cancer. That's not a thing. <laughs> Yay, I did it. Oh, man. It's so good. Okay, uh, but here's a, mm -hmm. about Karen in particular. Mm -hmm. You know what favorite thing about this musical version, at least? Okay. How they incorporated more or more modern sensibilities with social media. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that, 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 yeah, that, that was, was that was a big yeah. aspect. All right, so I had mentioned this when we talked. I talked about the like the Broadway musical version. I thought it sucked uh, from the the cast recording that I saw because like on stage it was really weird because they had this like scrolling feed and all these just random videos kind of display the social media. It felt very awkward and it ruined the pace of the actual show on stage. But in a movie, mm -hmm. using social media as a plot device and like a through line to move the plot forward it works perfectly because the thing that something that didn't exist in 2006 for high schoolers middle schoolers you know kids in general mm -hmm. is social media and you know something i say all the time right is i'm glad i'm not in high school right now because like when i was in high school social media was just starting to be a thing like you know we uh, like I, I i was in high school like during like the the facebook era like the facebook and mm -hmm. early twitter like good twitter like wild west early twitter mm. oh man yeah, and tumblr, i totally feel that and tumblr i totally feel peak that because i was i was in high school during the myspace days yep yep so like it's a, it's a lot of pressure right because like you know in in 2006 you know you, you had something like a burn book right but in 2024 everybody has their own burn book because everybody has a cell phone mm -hmm. and everybody can say whatever they want and hide behind their keyboards so like well you know, it, it really helps to drive that message home. Also, mm -hmm. it kind of like hits harder because in a world where where you can just write everything anonymously online, you actually had the vitriol to write it down. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it has it has such an extra punch to it. Um, And I think mm -hmm. like because we saw like the different social media reactions to, to all the different people around the school to these different events it also helped to kind of bolster uh tina fey's speech in the gym mm -hmm. about oh, I you, agree know, with that. <laughs> you know oh yeah uh talking behind people's backs and stuff like that i think this worked better here than it did in the original um i agree and uh, one thing i, I like to add 
because of uh, to make those comparisons between the two scenes individually Mm -hmm. you can get stuff out of the original uh like the original film speak about hey let's not talk shit about people behind their backs and it was more analog so the impact is kind of like secondhand information yeah it it felt more more after school especially almost yes whereas Mm -hmm. here in the musical since it's constant information kind of like information overload it's more like it's kind of more personal yeah in a way yeah it feels more yeah it feels more intimate because we actually get this we actually get to see these things right and we actually get to see Mm -hmm. people's like raw reaction to things when they happen exactly Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also about mm-hmm. Tina Fey's character. Mm-hmm. That they slightly improved her in some aspects. I do. I do also like the thing with her and the principal, where yeah, they actually confirmed instead of having that instead of having that awkward back and forth here, they just flat out confirm it, but in like an offhand thing where they don't really address it. Yep. It's like, all right, you're doing the dish. No, they're or he's walking, you're the, walking dog. the dog. Or you're walking the dogs. Yeah. Makes me wonder what kind of dog do they have. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah same dogs that's dogs plural yes yeah. are we talking two three what are we talking here are we talking same breed <laughs> yeah. different breeds what's up but yeah also tim meadows president principal was better mm-hmm. yeah um and also i will be honest here uh given the extra time and the fact that he's older the whole i'm tired of this shit mentality Make it's it, harder it now. fits more yeah. it fits way more it fits yeah. way more <laughs> because like yeah. t- like tim meadows didn't see like he, he he didn't feel as out of touch in in the original as he did mm-hmm. he felt more in on the joke in uh mm-hmm. in the original mean girls than he did in this one and this one he's just like i have no idea what the fuck is going on and i think it made it mm-hmm. funnier indeed um and i feel like that, that speech that he said at the end where it's like after this i'm retiring yep i think that was also a double edge thing where it's like tim meadows saying i don't care how many other adaptations you do of this i'm out yep uh so let's go ahead and talk about them let's talk about our two our two leads our two leads all right <sighs> so first off can i just so were you guys also annoyed by uh janice calling her caddy the entire time i was like her name's katie janice you hear it i you I see guess. it come on janice what's going on i can't but why but i did find it annoying. oh i found it annoying too and the one thing that i could say like okay i we, we have friends that just do shit to annoy us all the time or try to get a rise out of us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I think Janice was trying to do that to Katie. Yep. I mean, given how much, how guarded of a person Janice is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. But still, girl. Uh-uh. Also, that so the... Uh, you know, spe- speaking of uh, speaking of Katie, though, like finally getting to her as a character. <clears throat> and this is no knock on Lindy Lohan. I think, you know, Katie, uh, Katie's an iconic role and, you know, she's always going to be Katie for me. But like Lindsay Lohan and Mean Girls at the time was still Lindsay Lohan. So mm-hmm. like it was very hard to see Lindsay Lohan as not one of the popular girls because like she was still she was still pretty hot. <laughs> like. I'm going to just be front. I'm, I'm just going to be upfront about it. She was still, she was still hot. And not, and like this, this version of Katie, she looked like a regular girl, right? Like Lindsay Lohan in the original still looked like Lindsay Lohan. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I believe her name is uh, Angari Rice. Yeah. She did a great job. Um, I really liked, uh, I really liked yeah. the uh, smart and math, stupid and love song. Very catchy. Oh yeah. And also uh, definitely resonated with uh, the what if song yep, yep. Mm-hmm. and one thing i will say about our leading lady here god damn it girl mm. i know it happened in the original too but there are some things we do for love and it's just like mm. you went too far it's like little tortilla boy mm-hmm. yeah which uh just as a side note uh just as a side note speaking of we talked about how uh, all the characters seem to be like expanded more there was one that wasn't that i kind of wish was oh aaron yeah yeah aaron was just kind of there he was he was just there here's something interesting that i just want to kind of point out Hmm. Mm. yeah because in the original if y'all remember aaron had his little speech saying that book was made by some dumb girl like some dumb people who couldn't get over their dumb lives or something like that yeah Mm -hmm. and i think yeah that helped expand his character a little bit in the original they kind of streamlined him in the musical yeah i took out that part but i I, yeah that it it's he's there more so as a 
object. Right. Not so much an object, more like a foil for yeah. both of our yeah. principal because, characters. Because, here. because he's, he, he is just straight up a normal dude. Like, you know, what well, well, just like yeah. both of them are wrapped up in the like, you know, food chain of high school. He's just like, I I'm just a guy. Yeah, he mm -hmm. he's a vice. He's a, essentially a victim to their shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, oh, one, yeah. One, one thing that I do like about musical Aaron that they did do a good job of is uh, I think the actor really sold it when he like has that moment where like he's with drunk Katie and like she and she like accidentally spills the beans about like her faking being dumb mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he's just like oh my god you're a clone of regina mm -hmm. and the delivery of that i was like okay that was good mm -hmm. i like that yeah um which uh by the way uh he is the lead he is one of the the romantic love interests for uh the hit uh, amazon show uh the summer i turned pretty oh cool mm. uh but yeah uh so now now the star of the show oh yeah holy <laughs> shit renee rap look look mm. look oh. rachel oh. mcadam oh. Oh. is an icon regina george yes. is an icon she she is up there she is up there as like one of the most if not the most iconic archetypes of the queen bee bitch like in all of media mm -hmm. and so that those are some big those are some big pink stilettos to fill mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but my god yeah. renee rat killed it mm -hmm. the first number Frame i told jay one oh the, my goodness my, okay several memes activated in my brain when i heard her first like her first note i'm like oh and just like i did that one uh anime mm -hmm. meme of the man in the car that just made the scrunch uh the uh surprise scrunch face eyes dilated yep. followed by the monkey neuron activated meme yeah yep no like and just how they frame that first number right like oh. with with like how how the how the beat My comes name in is Regina and i am a diva like you know, and like they, they and they frame it with this just like this jungle vibe and the whole apex predator like oh it, my yeah. god she just every song with regina in it she Absol took your eyeballs and had them glued to her and and like and mm -hmm. and here's the thing right like rachel mcadams is gorgeous she, it was one of the things yeah. that really helped sell her as regina right like she was fucking hot but like mm -hmm. renee right she she took oh. that up a notch i'm not gonna lie and uh she also added like her own original uh like sass yep and quippiness to the character which if you ever see her in interviews yeah that's just that's just her her yeah I and I and I really right. dig that it's a, like she has a lot of personality and like you want to talk about like one of the strongest numbers of the entire movie world burn mm -hmm. holy, mm -hmm. holy yeah. shit. shit she I never thought of a musical number where someone basically says all right I'm gonna burn everybody socially and, and i'm gonna watch the chaos and they and they and, and the way it so ends good. with her pulling the fire yo the mm. shit with the fire yeah. alarm at it the end. has been uh. it has been a while gents a while since we've had a good villain song right yeah take that oh, witch Take that! I'll, look, I'm gonna keep bringing it up. This felt like a Disney villain song in the best way, and I was here. Mm -hmm. I was oh, here. Oh no, 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 no! Actually, gentlemen, we didn't have just a villain song. We've had multiple. Yeah. Multiple in one musical. Actually, I think it's just one continuous song, just split up into individual pieces that are called oh. songs. <laughs> yeah, but in World Burn, though, mm. she. Mm -hmm. Belt it. Oh yeah. Fucking, cool. She's a fucking I mean I already knew she was a powerhouse, but like mm -hmm. she was on some like Christina Aguilera, like early two thousands, like dirty video Christina mm -hmm. Aguilera type like gruff. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh I love it. Cause like it adds to the like the more animalistic kind of vibe they were going with. The whole cause like the whole theme of the musical is and of course of the movie itself is that like, you know, 
the high school hierarchy of cliques is very much like the jungle, right? And mm -hmm. Regina's at the top. And you you just you really get that vibe of just a girl who's like, fuck it, I don't got nothing to lose no more. Oh, you want to take me down? All right, I'm going to take all of you motherfuckers with me. Yeah. Um. And then also... I love how, like, the acting within acting in this of just, like, Renee Rapp pretending to be, like, the damaged victim of the burn book. Oh, yeah. So good. And how it was interspliced within the number. Oh. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then it's just uh, jumping ahead, though. Mm -hmm. Like at the end, painkiller Regina. Oh, mm -hmm. that's oh hilarious. Oh, her, Funny. All of her dialogue. I was, was so... literally laughing in the theater. Same, same. You know, I, actually... I was one of the few people in there, but. You know, uh, I, did, you know I might actually kind of like you, but I mean, I like everybody I like... when I'm on this medicine, so, you know, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. So funny. Ugh. Wonderful. Well, just also, also when uh, Katie does the the epic finale moment where she breaks the tiara and she hands, she throws one to Regina. Yep. And she's just like, <laughs> yep. Oh man. I, uh, so also. Also, talking about, like, saying the quiet part out loud stuff, um, mm -hmm. we gotta talk about Janice. We gotta talk about Janice, we gotta talk about Damien. So, uh, I, oh, yeah. I think Damien's so much better here, um, oh, yeah. because of how he's utilized, Which... right? Because with Damien in the original, he's just kind of a running gay joke, right? Yep. Uh, which, you know, product of its time. Mm -hmm. Um, but with this, how they use him in kind of a meta narrative sense, where they have those like little intermissions where uh, like he and Janice like narrate in between parts, I think oh, yeah. like really get to show off Damien's personality a lot more. And just the little small like gags that are uh, like within scenes, like him riding his grandma's scooter to yep. Janice's and art show. Them at French class. Yep. Beyonce. Beyonce. Uh, love Which, that. Which, uh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, this is his first, uh, like, he's done one thing on stage, and then this. You know who he reminds me of? Brian, did, did who? you watched Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt with me, right? Yeah. He reminds me of Titus. Titus. He reminds me of Titus. I can see that. He's got, like, that same big energy. That. I can see that. But, uh, but yeah, he, he starred in an, in a Broadway, uh, production of A Strange Loop, hmm. where he actually got a, uh, in 2022, where he actually got a, uh, Tony nod for Best Actor. Oh, cool. Good for him. But literally, he did that and then this. And that's all he's done so far. He's going to go. He's going to go places, man. He was great. Yes. But uh, Janice. So I love yes. that we finally get a backstory, but it's not too much. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's basic. We you can infer it. We all pretty much figured it out right in between the lines when we saw the original. But I like that they they establish it. Right. They establish that Janice, like in middle school, started to you know realize that she was into girls. Regina was her best friend. She develops a crush on Regina. Regina gets weirded out and then they like, you know, drift apart, become enemies. But here, here they add a complexity because they aren't making fun of her for being a lesbian Yep. this time. They're making fun of her for setting fire to the backpack. Yeah. 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 And which technically she actually did it. Yep. But it was accident. Kind of. Sort of. But well, she meant to burn the one thing, but then it ended up burning yeah, the, whole yeah, the whole backpack. backpack yeah. But yeah, so like, and I, I also like that they confirm that she's gay without having to say, oh yeah, Janice is gay. Like, no, she just takes a girl to the dance. Also, yep. she killed it in that suit, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. it was a fantastic outfit. Oh yeah. Um, And her number, rather be me, super catchy. Mm -hmm. Love that shit. Raise, Raise your, your right finger. Yeah. Oh my God. And hey, we can actually do that now that there isn't a video show. Right? And not have to worry about YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Fuck off, YouTube. <laughs> but, but yeah, her, her song was great. Yep. And it, it just, it really helped to like, to bring, like to bring the message home. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, character I didn't get to talk about much. My guy, my goat, Kevin G. My man, Kevin Kev G. Oh, yeah. Kevin oh. G was so great. Okay. By the way, I meant to tell you guys. Uh-huh. Because mm. it, it was bugging the shit out of me. I was like, I recognize Kevin G, this Kevin G, but I don't know who he is. And then I Googled it. Mm -hmm. okay. He was the best friend on American Born Chinese. Oh, shit. He was that man? Yes. Oh, really? Which Oh, yeah. oh which, which also, by the way, That's what he looks like. the main guy from American Born Chinese is also on the Mathletes team. Oh, what? shit. That's yes. funny. Oh, shit. You're right. You're right, That's Bryce. That's funny. But, yo, Kevin G had the best performance at the Winter Talent Show. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude. Hands down. I don't know. 
Okay, so we have to compare the two. Both men did great. Both men did great. But who performed the song just a wee bit better? Nah, nah. 2024 has it. 2024 Kevin G had more yeah. slack. Yeah, he definitely had more. 2024 Kevin G. Shout out to well, you, bud. Well, because in the original, they were playing it up completely for jokes. Yeah. Here, here they managed. They managed to uh, like thin thread the needle. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, and like you could tell, like it's definitely the product of like Tina Tina Fey just like over time getting better as a writer. Cause like mm -hmm. you know she's had plenty of she's had a, a shit ton of projects after this. Uh, like mm -hmm. you know after Mean Girls, so she she knows wh where you know as a writer you know where your faults are in your early work. Um. Mm -hmm. So like I think I think that was really cool. Kevin G was really fun. Um, yes, speaking of the was. athletes, I did not know about the cameo that blew my mind. It, mm -hmm. Like cameo, like <laughs> like like when we oh, when yeah. we got in the competition, and I was like, wait, that looks like that's not that's not. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. it, and then she and then she spoke, and I was like, it is. Mm -hmm. It's Lindsay Every Lohan. Holy shit! It, you will have to. I have to tell you this story about my theater experience. It was just me and a group of other individuals in the theater. I just looked at my, as I was looking at the screen and we got to that part. But when I saw her just introduced at the start of the number, because the whole uh, preparing for the uh, spring fling and the uh, math league competition yeah. happened in time. Yep. So when I saw her close up, I'm like, oh, it's Lindsay. Yep. Also, yeah. also, I, I love the, right. I love the running, the running, how they uh, pay off the running gag of the girl who doesn't go to the school. Oh, that, oh that's yeah. hilarious. I love that callback. Also, also with that, uh, I do like a smaller thing that they did here, and that was the fact that uh, in. In the uh, dance, mm -hmm. Katie wasn't wearing like a nice looking dress and everything like she was in the original. Yep, she's still wearing her mathletes outfit. Yep. No, in the in the original, she wore her mathletes outfit. Oh, I remember that yeah. very well because oh. since both events happened at the same time, yeah, yeah, kind of hard to change clothing. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she didn't get a chance huh. to change. She was in the Letterman jacket. My bad, misremembering. But anyway, oh, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, uh, Lindsay, Lindsay was fun to see her, uh, the, the nice little reference of it's only tied one other time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yep. Oh, and, uh, the other, and the other meta jokes, like, honey, I'm not, I don't know your life. Yep. Yeah. Um, only thing is, apparently, uh, Lindsay said that she didn't like one thing about the remake. Oh. Uh, did they make a the Megan the, oh, the a... Megan the Stallion song. Well, oh, what she meant she mentions the fire crop. Ah, uh, oh, 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 you talking about Megan the Stallion made the cameo on TikTok in that little TikTok montage? Well, no. How do I get out in of this? In her speech? song, in her song that plays at the end credit. Oh yeah. But anyway, uh, her cameo was great. I like Katie. Was like, why are you insulting me? This isn't a competition. Well. It technically is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's a math competition. It, I, I, I also like that she complimented the homegirl's hair. Cause I, like when I saw her, I was like, yo, yeah. this girl has really good, really nice hair. Good for you. <laughs> and, yeah. was, and even Katie made the same comment. I'm like, oh man. But yeah, overall. Also, uh -huh. I was just going to say, uh, you talk about looks. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler was great. And so was uh, What's Her Face. I'm blanking on her. Katie's mom in the original. Mm -hmm. But in this one, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you told me that those were those kid, their kids in real life, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, honestly, oh shit, we didn't even talk about Mama George. Real quick, let's talk about Mama yeah. George. Holy, Mama George, yeah. Holy shit, I Pam. think Mama George Pam. better than this one. Oh yeah, Pam. Phillips. Pam is hilarious. Well, no, Pam. Pam is Katie's mom. Oh yeah, Pam is Katie's mom. Yeah, yeah. Mama George. Busy Phil. Yeah, busy. Is Mama yeah. George. Yeah, Mama George. Holy shit, Mama George was fucking great. Definition of peaked in high school. Definitely. Like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. the like the scene where she's like all up on Shane when they're taking mm -hmm. the pictures. I uh, I fucking died. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. lost it. And also, I, and I, I, I and I love I love the delivery of the one line where she where she's just like remember. Girls, it doesn't get, it literally doesn't get any better from here. Oh, yeah. And it, I was just your... like, oh, that's so sad. It, it's like, Regina, why are you doing that? You look great, sweetie. Shut up, mom. And then she walks out, looks at the bar. Honey, why are you eating these? This is what we gave to your Nana. This is what we gave to Nana Joan when she could, when we, uh, when we wanted her to eat. Uh, like, Ugh. oh, man. But yeah, <laughs> well, love. Uh, you know the uh -huh. good thing that I am thankful they, uh, that the musical removed from the original? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 
thing about Regina's little sister I listening or listening to my humps. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was mad That's uncomfortable. Right. That was mad That's uncomfortable. Here, here they just completely got rid of her yep. little sister. Yep, she doesn't exist. Yeah. Doesn't exist. Doesn't, we, don't, yeah. we don't need to see a child dancing to Black Eyed Peas. Nope, we don't need mm -hmm. that. She went into the she went into the bin with uh, Katie's dad. Yep, just like character no more. Just got tossed into the character ether. Mm. Uh, but yeah, overall, like I mean, as you can see, we all had a fun time with it. Like, and yeah. with a with a movie like this, that's all you can really ask for, for real. Like, yeah. It, oh, also mm -hmm. uh, another character that we forgot because uh -huh. mm -hmm. we mentioned we mentioned how uh, they changed the story plot with the coach, but John Hamm as the new reinvented coach. I mean, oh yeah, he was he, he was hilarious. I yeah. I thought the sperm whale joke was a bit lame as fuck, but hey, it is what it is. Con, <laughs> we did abstinence. And then... No, uh, you know when Katie wanted to use the bathroom? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It... I, I remember this. Yeah, I remember this part. Oh, yeah. but, but apparently uh, the whole bathroom pass thing is a, like, bad situation that the current generation is going through. Yep. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a COVID thing. Uh, yeah, the kid, yeah, the kids have talked about it. Um, Like, uh, the, they actually really crack down on the bathroom pass thing uh, na nowadays. Um. Also, some places are making it so that uh, you can't use the bathroom ten minutes before or after the bell. Oh man! But uh, yikes! But yeah, bikes. So like, we had a great time with it. It was a lot of fun. Um, final thoughts and ratings, gentlemen. We'll start this time. We'll go individually. We will start mm. with Tony. Mm. This musical was fun. I mean. I love musicals. We all love musicals here. Mm -hmm. Yep. With my overall experience with the original and this, just kind of meeting together in this nice metal, I will give this a 9.5. Wow, Come that's on. that's really high. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't gonna go there. Uh, I'll go next. I wasn't gonna go there. I'll go next. Uh, I'm a point <laughs> below you again, Tony. Eight point five. Brian, are uh, we tied? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A new tradition has Cause, formed with this new season. Cause, cause, uh, cause I, I, saw, I saw I... that look on your face. You guys can't see the look on his face, but I saw the look on his face. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what I was thinking, because it, it is really good and honestly probably might be better than the original. Yeah, like, but yeah. Still, like, but still, it had it had a few hang-ups here for me to give it in the, like, nines. Yeah, with, with me, right, it improves on a lot of the stuff from the original, which is why mm -hmm. I give it the 8.5. But, like, the reason it can't get to the nine range for me is because it still... It's still just the same movie again, which isn't a bad thing, right? It's the same movie again, but you actually improved on things. But mm -hmm. because you didn't really, you know, you didn't, you know, do anything crazy, I can't really add anything more than I would with mm -hmm. Mean Girls. And honestly, original Mean Girls, I would give like an eight, like in general, even before, yeah. even before seeing the, the musical, I, I always gave Mean Girls like an eight. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, but it's not like a 10 out of 10. Yeah, also, I do want to point out one thing. Mm -hmm. This is the most fun I've had in the theater in a long time. Same. I thought yeah. this was going to be just as awkward as when I went to go see anyone but you in the theaters, but I had a blast with the, uh, the people I, would, uh, th I was in the theater with. Uh, mine was a little bit awkward because it was just me and one couple, uh, but I still had fun watching it. Mm -hmm. It was just a very fun movie. Oh yeah, yeah, very yeah. fun. So I think mm -hmm. my rate as high as it is is because I gotta live enjoyment because of the more the musical numbers just oh, yeah, did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, the, look, it, look, I I'm talking I'm talking from a movie standpoint. If we're talking from a theater kid standpoint, that's when we raise like to the like the nine. If we're talking like as a musical, as a kid, I agree that I would at least give it a nine. But the the theater kid in me just spoke no, out yeah, more. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, we're not, we're not trying to talk you away yeah. from it. Yeah, like, no, but totally I do want to say one last thing, because mm -hmm. you made me think about it, because you said talking from a key, theater kid standpoint. One other thing is uh, our girl learned to like theater kids. Yep. At and, the end. And I love, and I love the, I, I love the little meta narrative uh, where, where like, you know, when they're having the whole thing in the gym where like they're having the confession, the fucking background dancer extras have their own little tiff like i'm I'm sorry for saying you were dragging us down in that last number but you were off by like you were off by a whole you were off by a whole count <laughs> yeah it was that funny. shit the made me fucking laugh out laugh. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah um and it's that kind of camp damn, yeah he, he's so good but she still doesn't go here man yeah yeah that that kind of campy musical bullshit like 
I, I totally get Tony's perspective, right? Like, like I said, if I was yeah. just talking about this as a musical, totally would rate it higher. But we're we're, we're talking about it as a movie, eight point five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, it would it would be still a nine. Yeah. If we're talking as purely a movie with the stuff added in, like, yeah, that's fine. But for me, just on a more personal, more like pseudo bias question well, mark dude we're all we're all biased here like yeah he, he, that, 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 that's yeah, kind of how this shit works we're not gonna fight you on this we're not saying that you're bad for that no, like no, no he's, he's just giving his own like, justification no i feel i feel you i'm just kind of clarifying my point it's like mm -hmm. it's for me music just activates a lot more energy in oh yeah and it and it's been for it's, it's been forever for me since I I've seen a good musical. I think that's why oh, yeah. in the year in wrap up I gave so much praise to uh, Battle of Songbirds and Snakes because it was like a stealth <laughs> musical. I had no idea this was gonna be a, like that music was such a big thing in it. I'm like, yo, this why is so good? So mm -hmm. so like, I think mm -hmm. I think the last time that we the last time we on the podcast covered a musical Jingle Jangle was a Jingle Jangle, but the last time that there was an actual like musical in general that in the, the homies, yeah yeah was, the homies uh, enjoyed was uh in the heights yeah in the heights and also uh the greatest showman yeah greatest showman was fun greatest showman was fun but i'm glad to see musicals coming back wish we could get more uh, we're getting more as far as i because uh, as far as i know the uh, the next one that we're getting is at the end of the year but it's the but one it's gonna be a big one but it's the one mm -hmm. very excited for it uh but well, that's a little too far ahead into the future Brian, since we're wrapping up, go ahead and tell the folks at home what we will be covering next time on the Channel Tears podcast. Well, today we talked about high schoolers. Next time, we're going even younger. 12-year-olds. But they're also still dealing with their own clickiness just on an even grander scale. Also, because also, Chris Hansen, don't come for us. We're talking about demigods. All right, Brian, yes. Brian made the setup yeah. sound real sus. It was real sus, Brian. My bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I stepped into it again, keeping, like I always do. Keeping it in here. Tony, yes. future Tony, keep this in here, because that was funny. But yeah, we are heading to Camp Half-Blood. Finally, yeah. finally, I get yeah. to talk about Percy Jackson. Buckle up, buttercups. We're going into full book nerd territory. I hope y'all mm -hmm. are ready for book tangents. Greek mythology tangents, lots and lots of fucking tangents. Mm -hmm. I'm Maybe ready. A little bit of autistic screaming. Maybe a little bit of autistic screaming, but yeah. who knows? Probably, probably. But it's going to be a blast. I cannot wait to see how this season ends. It's been great so far, and I am looking forward to discussing Percy Jackson and the Olympian season one with the rest of you lovely folks next time. Yeah. But until then, we'll see you next week. Stay fetch, people. Stay fetch. That's just not going to happen, man. Yes, it will. We made it happen. It got a musical. It happened.